Hello everyone, my name is Pollyanna and today I'd like to talk a little bit about my thesis, which is exploring gender differences in restraint use in psychiatric patients across Ontario. I'd like to start by inviting you to imagine something with me. Imagine you're walking down the street and a man starts to come towards you. He's about six foot five, has a strong build, is wearing a threatening shirt. And as he approaches you, he quickly pulls his hand back into a fist. What do you do? Do you have the instinct to run or fight? Now, how would this change if this wasn't a man, but a woman? Would you feel that you have more or less of a fighting chance? Evaluation of threat is crucial in the application of restraints to hospital psychiatric patients. It involves assessing whether an individual is a threat to themselves or others. While this may seem straightforward, it's not always the case. We can see conversations all over the world today on the fact that assessing someone as a threat is not simple and we can often be wrong. In Ontario, restraints are currently used as a last resort for managing aggression in patients. This is because the act of being restrained can lead to poor outcomes and a breakdown of trust between the clinician and the patient. Not to mention those with mental health issues are more likely to be victims rather than perpetrators. My research is exploring these patterns of restraint use at a population level to understand whether these differences between men and women are a systemic issue. Discrepancies between men and women are not new in mental health, with variations in the presentation of symptoms, rates of mental health disorders, and even response to medications, therapies, and supports. Differences in themselves may not be an issue, but when it comes to treatment, a difference without a reason could be a sign that the best care is not being provided. Some research shows that men and women with the same mental health disorders are treated with different drug therapies, for example, without a clinical justification for this treatment decision. There's a similar question in the use of restraints. It seems that even with similar levels of aggression, men and women are restrained in vastly different proportions, with men being restrained more often than women. In an age with so much information to assess risk, plan for change, and predict behavior, it seems that split-second decisions can still be made on unrelated characteristics. Yes, mental health is inextricably connected to biological and social factors, and it always will be. This is exactly why we need to understand in our research why gender, culture, sexuality are affecting the way we provide care. Only then can we move towards a more equitable and responsive healthcare system where our differences are assets to recovery, not obstacles. Why does this matter? Because our physical traits are unalterable, but the way we provide care is not. Thank you.